This is what we call a breadboard, and a breadboard is really just a prototype board. It's called a breadboard because when you used to want to make a prototype of an electric circuit, you went in the kitchen and you found the board that you got bread on and you hammer a bunch of nails in it and you connect wires to that nail, to those nails and you make your circuit. And then when you need to cut bread, you you know need to flip it over and cut bread on the other side. So luckily we now have this, which is called a prototype board, but for some reason it's still called a breadboard. So I wanted to show you just a few things about the breadboard. The first thing to note about a breadboard is it has some rows and these are called terminal rows, terminal strips or terminal rows. And they have, they each have columns. They have row numbers from one down to 65 and they have um, column labels as well. A, B, C, D, E on one side, F, G, H, I, J on the other side. Now, A, B, C, D, E are not connected to F, G, H, I, J on this side, but A, B, C, D, E are all connected together. And then there is a gap and then these ones are all connected together. So if I want to connect something, I don't have to, you know, solder a wire together. I can put something in F and then something in J will be connected to it. And then down the sides, these are all connected together as well. These, uh, these are um, bus bars. So they are your power bus on each side and one is marked positive and one is marked negative. So we use uh, what's marked there and we notice that they are not connected either. So if you are going to power your prototype circuit by plugging in positive on one side and negative on the other, you have to make sure that you go across here. So I'm gonna flip over the breadboard and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside. Again, if I were to take this cover off, all I would find are these terminal strips and those are little strips of aluminum. They could be copper on a really good breadboard, but they're most likely aluminum. And they are connected like that. So if I plug something in here, it is electrically connected to here, but it's not electrically connected here. So if I want to electrically connect something to from here, from this bus, this terminal strip to this terminal strip, I would have to run a wire outside, but there is no wire inside the board, but all of the positive and negative is connected together. So you can ground or take power from each of these sides. Those are connected together. But if you connect this to positive and this to negative, and then you wire to both sides of this board, you're going to have to connect then with a wire positive to positive and negative to negative. You're gonna to have to jumper these, jumper these um, with an actual wire. So that's one of the common things that we do. So another thing that you uh, need to know is that a breadboard has an up and a down position. So when you hold your breadboard in your hand like this, this is right side up, this is upside down. Make sure you're always holding it right side up. How do I know? Well, upside down, it, it says J-I-H, it, it's not in alphabetical order. So hold it like this, so it's A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. Now, what we're usually doing with a prototype board is we have some sort of an integrated circuit chip, so an IC chip. So here's an IC chip, integrated circuit or dip chip, if um, if you wanna call it that. So this is, this is a chip, inside here there are transistors, resistors, and diodes that do a certain thing, it's not magic, it is a thing that we have, you know, specified a manufacturer to make a series of resistors, transistors and diodes that will do a certain uh, thing of logic, simple or complex, and they sit inside this little um, silicon dual uh, inline uh, chip, dual inline processor chip, dip chip. Now, what you notice about the chips is it has pins at the side. So this one has seven pins on one side and it has seven pins on the other side. There is a right way to hold a chip. This is the wrong way, this is upside down, this is the correct way. And the correct way to hold the chip is so that this little notch is sitting at the top. If this notch is sitting at the top, then I know this is pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four, five, six, seven. And then up the bottom here, pin eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 
So now I take my breadboard, I spin it around, I hold it right side up so it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G so I can see it. Then I take my chip, I spin it around, I find it right side up is where I will see this little cut out of it. And that means I can put my chip on the board. Now, if I put my chip on the board across these terminal strips, then I am literally short circuiting from pin one to pin 14, etc. But we know that there is a gap in the middle. So putting my chip in the middle here so that it straddles the gap, I'm straddling the gap and that will help me not short circuit. It means that I am connected to seven terminal strips on the left-hand side, and I'm connected to seven terminal strips on the right-hand side. So when I put wires in those terminal strips, anywhere along them, it means I am electrically connected if I stick a wire in here. All right, so that's a breadboard, and that's how you mount a chip on the breadboard. Now, a chip is uh, something that has to be powered. So if I... You know, if I if I hand you a cell phone and it has no battery in it, it means it has no positive and negative and it has no um, potential to do to, for electrical work. It has uh, no energy in it. And same with the chip. As this chip is just sitting here, it is doing nothing. It is not powered. So just like how you have to put a battery in your cell phone, you have to power a chip. How do we know how to power our chip? We look up a thing called a pinout. But the pinout on most chips is the same and for power and ground. So all it says is that in pin 7, we have to ground it. And pin um, 14 usually goes to power. Now, a lot of people would go and stick a really big wire in here close to the chip and go all the way over to power. I don't like doing that because power and ground is just something you need. You know, you don't look at your battery all the time in your cell phone. It, it doesn't get in the way of your work. So let's not have the powering of our chip get in the way of, of our work. So I recommend that you make these little, um, these uh, little tiny pieces of wire that are bent at 90 degrees with your needle nose plier. And it's a little jumper. I know from my pinout, or I just told you that I need to electrically connect pin 14 to power. So there we go. Pin 14 is connected to power. This is the power strip. This is the terminal that has pin 14 on it. So that is connected to power. Then I'll show you how to build these little tiny strips because they're tinier than you would think. So what you do to build these is you'd have normally, you know, it's nice to strip the wire if it's if it's um, in a um, already on the spool without it being cut because it's longer and you can hold on to it. So I strip the one side and then I cut it mm, smaller than you would even think that you have to cut it. And then you strip the other side. And you might need your pliers for that. Always have needle nose pliers with you when you're building a circuit. All right. I don't have the best little wire stripper here. There we go. Now with my needle nose pliers, what I'm gonna do is put a 90 degree bend on each side of these because I like a 90 degree bend in order to look nice and flat on my board. And when I'm building with this board, I'm always gonna have chips on it. So I'm always gonna have these, these, um, these little jumpers because I'm always gonna have to power a chip. There's not gonna be a chip that doesn't have to take power. It's just like your cell phone. There isn't a cell phone that's gonna work without power. So these are fiddly little things to make. I like to tell people that it's like making a little staple like it's even smaller than a staple. It's not the best job there, but uh, with a bit more effort can make it even better. So there is pin seven and pin seven goes to ground and ground is sitting right here. So I'm gonna go from pin seven into ground, push that into my board. And now my chip will be powered when I electrically connect this, when I electrically connect um, these sides 
and and if I jump for the bottom here. So that's just a quick introduction to what a breadboard is and how to get started using it. And uh, of course, how to bend our little jumper wires. And I'm gonna make the next video about how to wire up the logic inside because this is sort of how you want things, you know, outside, not in prime real estate, but inside the prime real estate, we wanna do the work of the logic of the circuit. So we'll wire a little bit differently inside the logic of the circuit.